In this video, I'll show you uh, two ways of including a bibliography in your LaTeX document. The first one is quite simple, and it's useful if you if you only have a few sources to, to cite. Uh, so, for for example, in this case, we have uh, only three books that we want to actually cite in our document, and the way you do it is using this the bibliography bibliography environment, which basically works like an itemize. You see here, I have this bib item command, uh, which you have to supply uh, uh, an argument to, which is the actual label for your um, for your bibliography element, and then you write whatever you want here. I wrote like here I used uh, I wrote the, the author's name, the title in in uh, italic, and then other information about the book. Uh, but you don't have to, to write this. You, you can write basically whatever you want. So this the bibliography environment is just a combination of an uh, enumerate environment with some label and ref uh, and ref system, which you can cite using the cite command. And here you can see the cite command in two versions. Uh, this version down here it's uh, the most simple one, where you just cite uh, the label, and it appears like this in the text. Uh, you can also cite specific spots, specific elements of your of your book, for example, uh, using this optional command, uh, in which basically you can write whatever you want here about chapter five. Uh, and so you see that it appears like this in book number three, which is this one, chapter five, you can find this specific statement. Uh, but here I could have written whatever I wanted. Could this, I, I, could, I could have written theorem, and you see it says theorem. I, I could have written, I don't know, fish whatever word I want. So it's very, um, it's very uh, free in the way you use it. Uh, there's a, actually, let me write a chapter again. I don't want to leave random words. Um, another way to use it is to cite multiple sources at once. So you can cite both this Knopf book and this Samueli one at once. And it's going to appear like this, separated by commas. So it, it's quite simple. And you see that um, since you have to write everything by hand here, once you, you start adding many different sources to site, uh, it starts getting a bit complicated. And also, if you want to change the style of the, uh, of the bibliography and you want, for example, now you want titles to be in, instead of italic, you want them to be in boldface, uh, you'll have to change all of them manually. So it, it's quite, you have to do some, some stuff by hand. And also notice one thing that here I only cited sources 3 and 1, I never cited this source 2, but since you wrote it here, it still appears, so it's, it's probably, maybe it's something you want to do, but since it's never cited, it would make sense that it doesn't appear. So just keep it in mind, because now I'm going to show you uh, the second way of citing sources, uh, of including a bibliography, which is using uh, BibTeX. Now there's two slightly different things, one is called BibTeX and, and the, other called, the other one is called Bib LaTeX. Uh, I'm using BibTeX. It's they're very similar. So if you if you later someone tells you that Bib LaTeX is better because it can do more stuff, it's it will be easier to switch. So for now we will see we will have a look at, at BibTeX. So how does BibTeX work? You have to write your bibliography in a separate file which I have already prepared. This one, and you see that the well I'm citing the same three books, but the syntax here is is quite quite different. This is not uh, not the normal LaTeX syntax you have. And you have to s start a, um, a new field in this file with this at, and then you say if it is a book, something else, or you can, you can, it can be an article, a PhD thesis, uh, many different things. And then you have to, to write some uh, specific fields, this author, title, publisher, these are all uh, keywords. I, I'm not making them up. They are included in the bibliotech syntax. And then you say, uh, you give a value to these variables, the, the value that you want. Um, yeah, so there's two slightly different ways of doing it. I can use um, quotation marks or curly braces. It's, it works the same. I don't know if there is any particular difference. And once you've wrote this, how do you include it? You include it by, uh, instead of writing this, actually, let, let me open a new file. Uh, I will just copy the text. Let me. Uh, let me get a new file. Start. I just copy the text, which now 
should have all uh, broken links. Uh, let's say Biblio 3. Now this text, well, it's the same, but it has all broken links. And how do you include it? You have to write two things. One is you have to specify a bibliography style, which is compulsory, but if you want, you can just use plain, which should be the same style of the, the bibliography environment. And then you have to actually include your bibliography using the bibliography command. And you write the name of the file, file without the .bib extension. So it has to be like this, without .bib. Now, uh, since uh, LaTeX is a bit clumsy at times, you, in this case, you have to compile four times. So once you have to compile, actually, let me show it to you. Uh, where is it here? Uh, first you do, you compile LaTeX normally. It doesn't work. Then you have to compile using BibTeX. It still doesn't work, but now it has built some, some other files, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can show you because the files, I think, were already there, but anyway. Uh, and now you have to compile again twice. Uh, once, you see the bibliography appears here, but still you have question marks. And you finally, if you compile another time, you finally get your citation references. So let's review this. It's like late, you have to run LaTeX, BibTeX, LaTeX, and LaTeX again. So four things, uh, four things in total. Uh, in TechMaker, it's F1, F11, F1, F1. So LaTeX, BibTeX, LaTeX, LaTeX. Um, yeah, and you see here it works basically in the same way. I can use the same site command and the same, uh, yeah, with the same, exactly the same syntax. And notice that now in the bibliography file, uh, well, this was the old file, in this bibliography file, file that we included, there was also this lang algebra uh, book, which does not appear um, which does not appear in the document because we actually never cited it. If we do cite it, uh, cite, what is it? Lang algebra, I think. Compile it the usual four times, F1, F11, F1, F1. Now it does appear. Uh, so you see this bibliography with, uh, with this command actually well, BibTeX is smart in the sense that it doesn't include everything that you write, but only what you need. And if we go back to the file, and another thing that it does smartly, I think, now notice that I wrote this in alphabetic order, but I don't have to. Maybe I don't have this book here at first, and I actually include it later. And now the alphabetic order is all screwed up. And with the traditional way, the bibliography environment, I would have to sort them manually. Uh, but now let me save this file and go back to this Biblio. Well, I compile again. Uh, I think you kind of have to trust me now that I uh, uh, it's going to sort them alphabetically anyway. Yeah, they're sorting the same way. Um, maybe it's better if I show it with another example. So that, just wait a second and I'll show you how the alphabetic order is kept. Um, yeah, so let me let me show you how to how do you add things here. Well, you can write them by hand. Uh, in TechMaker, you actually have this nice helper here, which kind of works like the wizard. So you go on bibliography and you choose what you want to cite. You see here there's BibTeX and BibLatex, which choose slightly different things, but the syntax is the same. Let's say I'm citing an article, and then I can just uh, fill in the stuff. Uh, article, I don't know, X. Author, uh, let's say that the name starts with A. I don't know, Albert or whatever. Uh, title, I have to specify something. Journal, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Annals of Mathematics. You have to specify all this stuff and still we are uh, specifying it by hand. But uh, I will show you how you actually can save some work by and, and not specify anything by hand, but just looking online. Um, now, with all these things that start with opt are actually optional, so you don't have to include them, and I'll actually don't include them. And now, okay, so this is the last item that we added. We go back to our file and we cite the X uh, article. Now we compile the usual four times, F1, F11, F11, uh, sorry, one, 
F1. And now you see what happened, that the alphabetic order is preserved, but this Albert, uh, this, this title, this article written by Albert is actually the first one because it uses alphabetic order by, order by default. Okay, so this is quite handy. Um, and of course, if I remove one of them and I compile the usual four times, uh, the numbering is kept. Uh, you can also change the style of the bibliography by changing this plane here. Uh, for example, ACM is a different style. Compile the usual four times. And you see that here you get uh, something slightly different. Here is small caps. This The title is in uh, italic. And notice that BibTech is also smart in a sense that here the name Knuff, D, I actually wrote it as Donald Knuff, <coughs> Knuff. but um, BibTech decided that since the ACM, ACM style for references uh, says that you should write names like this, like last name, comma, initial, uh, it automatically recognizes what is the name and what is the last name and writes it like this. It's not perfect, sometimes it does it wrong, but if you write them in a consistent way, you should be able to always get the first name and last name correctly. Um, okay, one last thing that I want to show you. Uh, oh, actually, let me show you another style. There's a, another style that maybe you like better. It's the alf style, which instead of using... Uh, does it work? F11. Uh, maybe it's not uh, alpha style, maybe alpha, sorry. Yeah, alpha style. Uh, it's not alpha, it's alpha. Uh, uses uh, some some, initial, some of the first letters of the, of the name, of the last name of the author instead of using numbers, which maybe it's handy. Actually, I like this one. Um, okay, but so, so far you see some reasons why this, this bibtech might be better, but you might think, be thinking that in the end you still have to write all this stuff by hand, which is not much different than writing all this stuff by hand. So what is the true advantage? So this format, this BibTech format, is actually quite standard. And if you go online, places like Google Scholar, for example, you can look up for your reference. As I said here, uh, I did it yesterday to, to look for, to make my, my Bib file. Um, you can look for your favorite book, uh, Scholar, uh, I think it's mostly academic papers and books, so, so you won't find your uh, your fantasy novel or whatever. Um, but let's look, for example, for, I don't know, uh, analysis by Rudin. Should be principles of mathematical analysis. Yeah, let's say this is the book you want to cite. You go here. Was it, uh, I should zoom in somehow. Here. Okay, you see here there is this uh, site com uh, icon. You click it. When you click on BibTech, and you, whoops, and you actually get uh, the full BibTech format formatted command. So you can just copy this, uh, put it in your your file here. You can put it at the end because, I, as I told you, the, the alphabetic order is going to be preserved anyway. Then you say. Uh, no, this is the first example. And you can cite your, uh, actually, let me check what the name here. It's Ruling 1967 Principles. This is just the, the label. You can like shorten it if you want to simply Ruling. Save the file, go here, cite, uh, and then you can cite Ruling. Compile the usual four times, F1, F11, F1 one and yeah and you get and you get this citation here I don't know why it's called R plus well anyway uh, this should be enough for you to see how our big tech works and so let, let's review what we see with what we saw we saw this simple way with the bibliography environment which you can use if you have only a few sources to cite maybe three five at most if you have more complex things, you can use uh, this BibTech file. And notice that since only the things that we actually cite appear in this BibTech file, you can have maybe one unique 
my uh, bit file for all the documents you write. And then every time uh, BibTech is going to, to write here only the ones that you actually cite. So you can have like 10,000 different, a uh, list of 10,000 different books in your bit file, but then you only cite three or four of them and only those appear here. So another reason why it's useful to use this BibTech file is if you, uh, if you want to write multiple documents that cite dif different sources, but you still use the same bib file every time. Okay, yeah, so this is all I wanted to say about the in LaTeX.